Hey everybody, uh, so today I wanted to discuss the question as to whether Ionic apps are native apps. And I think this is something there's probably a little bit of confusion around, especially for uh, newer Ionic developers. Uh, depending on who you ask, you'll probably get two different answers or, or more than that. And uh, I think that there isn't really a definitive answer to that question. Uh, I think it really depends a lot on what your definition of a native app is and also the context in, you know, in which you're talking about it. And as always with topics like this, there is an element of ego and, and gatekeeping to it where uh, I guess certain people want to protect the thing that they do or they think what they do is the best and uh, perhaps use that to, to frame their opinion on uh, the language they're using. Uh, so what I want to do in this video is just to first give a sort of high level overview of what what an Ionic app is and how it differs to a regular native app. And then at the end of this video, I'll give my opinion on the terminology that I like to use. Uh, but yeah, I just want to leave you with kind of the facts of the matter and then you can kind of decide for yourself, I guess. Uh, so I'll be focusing just on iOS and Android. So Ionic applications that have been built with either Cordova or Capacitor to get uh, an iOS or Android app. Uh, of course, Ionic can be used to build other things as well, uh, like progressive web apps or even Electron apps, those sorts of things. But for now, I will just focus on Ionic apps built with Cordova or Capacitor for Android or iOS. Okay, so let's start talking about uh, what makes an Ionic app the, the same or similar to a native app and what makes them different. And so when we're talking about the actual software that is installed onto the user's device, uh, there's really no difference between a native app, a regular native app, and an Ionic application. Uh, if we're installing it on iOS, we'll have an IPA package. On Android, you have the APK file. Uh, this is just, in both cases, it's just a normal native application that's being installed. And both of these applications have full access to you know, all of the normal native functionality that you would. Where the difference starts to come in is in the way that the user interface is displayed to the user. Now in a regular native application, so that's uh, an application that is uh, coded in say uh, Swift or Objective-C for iOS or uh, Java or Kotlin for Android, those kinds of applications use the standard native uh, controls, the standard native UI elements for the application. Uh, whereas an Ionic application actually uses an embedded browser to display the user interface. So this is what allows Ionic applications to use WebTech and display everything uh, using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And so this embedded browser is something that the user can't see, uh, but really that's kind of the, the view rendering engine that the app is using. Uh, so rather than using the standard sort of native UI elements, we're actually using WebTech that's embedded into a browser. And that browser is being displayed inside that native application. Now, in most cases to the end user, these two things look the same, but the method in which it's uh, achieved is quite different. And this is what you would probably often hear referred to as the hybrid approach. Now, because of that difference, many people would say that since uh, Ionic applications uh, using Cordova or Capacitor, uh, since they're not using the native UI elements, uh, they would say that that is no longer a native application. Or at least some people might refer to that as not being uh, real native or true native or something like that. And there are other implications besides just uh, not using the native UI controls. The fact that uh, an Ionic application uh, lives within this browser, which is embedded into the native application. This adds this layer between the app and the actual native functionality of the device. So this means that if uh, your application wants to access something that's only available through native functionality, there needs to be some kind of uh, plug-in or communication involved, and that's typically a role that Cordova or Capacitor fulfills. So rather than requesting native resources directly, you first have to make a request to Cordova or Capacitor, and then that sort of acts as the, the go between between your app and the actual native device. And so this does place some limitations on the application. Essentially, you're using the embedded browser as the the, the engine that's running your application. Now that's providing the processing power for your application as opposed to uh, standard native apps where you are using the full resources of the phone. Now sometimes this does matter and sometimes it doesn't. And so there is, I guess, uh, at least, again, I'm not trying to give my opinion here, but a bit of misconception in terms of um, performance 
and I guess you get a lot of people saying that you know native apps are just inherently better than Ionic applications because they have more performance available uh, but that is not always the case they do have this kind of higher performance cap but a lot of the time the power provided by the browser is more than enough to do what you need to do in the application but again I want to highlight that sometimes it's not and sometimes going for a regular native app uh, is the correct choice so uh, before I stray too much into getting into performance comparisons and giving my opinion I'll I guess I'll cut the the facts segment uh, there um, and I guess now I'll give you my opinion on what I would call an Ionic application and really I think it, it really does depend on uh, the context for me. Uh, in a general sense I would say that Ionic apps are native apps. Uh, they're installed onto a device and downloaded through the app store like any other native app. The actual software that is installed is a native app. You have full access to that native app um, although you're the view of your application is contained within the browser. If you want to, you still can code outside of that as well. So in a general context, I think it makes the most sense to refer to them as a native because when a lot of people are talking about uh, a native application, they're thinking of things that you're downloading from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Uh, but I also think it does make sense to distinguish uh, an Ionic app from a regular native app as well. Uh, in certain contexts, so especially if we're talking about um, you know, what sort of approach we want to take to build an application when we're actually comparing things, when we're trying to decide on an approach to take, it makes sense to identify these things as two different things because they are. Uh, I don't necessarily like the, I guess, the real native or true native uh, description, uh, but yeah, I think using terms like hybrid apps probably makes sense for Ionic, um, and I don't think uh, real native or uh, true native is really that good of a term. I'd prefer something like, you know, a, a native app with native UI. I feel like that's a you know, more accurate description. But again, this is all just my, my opinion. There's not really any rules around exactly how we refer to these things. So um, yeah, let's have a, a discussion about it. I guess if you do have an opinion on uh, the terminology that you like to use or that you think should be used, um, leave a comment and uh, yeah. Uh, so my camera just decided it was done uh, filming just then. Uh, but anyway, I think I was saying that uh, uh, that you should uh, leave any opinions you have in the comments. And yeah, we'll get a discussion going around that and hopefully it's a productive one. And yeah, so thanks for watching this video and I will see you again in the next one.